what does it mean for something like zero zero to be a solution to an inequality or even an equation? What does it mean? What steps do you go through to figure out if it's a solution or not? Right. Now, it's not an equation, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's an inequality. Simple, uh, not a big deal. Um, so, I don't know why I did that. <coughs> so, we plug in the x and the y <coughs> to that inequality, and if it's a solution, then what's going to happen? It'll <coughs> be what? Equal on both sides. Be equal on both sides? to be equal, right? Yeah? When you plug it in, it should be less than 3. Yeah, this should be less than 3. That side, that side should be less than that. Or we could just say it should be, <coughs> whatever it's saying, it should be saying the truth. <coughs> it says something that's false and it's not a solution. So 2 times, wow, 2 times 0 minus 0 is less than 3. Let's see. 0 minus 0 is 0. Is that less than 3? Yes. <coughs> I'll say it if you're ashamed. And then we plug in uh, 2 in for x and negative 2 in for y. So 2 times 2 minus <coughs> negative 2 less than 3, 4 plus 4, or plus 2, not 4, 4 plus 2. So we have less than 3, 6 less than 3. No, it's not. So <coughs> not a solution. How do we go about graphing these? Can we start somewhere? I think in this case, you start at uh, positive 3. What's that? In this case, you start at positive 3. Start at positive 3. Like you're graphing a line? Yes. Yeah? OK. And then what? Uh, then you go up 3 and go to the right one. There we go. We're going to connect those dots, right? How else do we do that? A dotted line. Why is it dotted? Right. If we were to pick a point off of this line and take that x and y and put it in here, put the x there, put the y there, both sides would be what? Equal. Equal. And they can't be equal because it says just less than. And y is just less than that, not equal to. So we don't include points in the line, but we do include points where the y would wind up being less than what you get when you plug in your x into the side, right? Where will we find those values? <coughs> Below the line. The y values are <coughs> less below things. The, the lesser y values are down. And over here. How do we graph this way? Yep. You, you subtract 2x right? Okay, so you're going to change the, uh, the inequality up a little bit. Negative 2x minus 10. Divided by 5. Negative 2 fifths x minus 2. So following the example that Anthony gave us from the last problem, we go down 2, and then we'll do the slope up 2 into the left 5. Connect it how? Solid. That solid line, because equals is fine. Points on the line, the x and the y from a point <coughs> on the line will make the both sides equal. And where do we shape? Below the line, because we want the y's, which are vertical, to be less than the y's on the line. <coughs> okay. Any questions from that or another part of the homework? Yeah. Uh, don't have any questions, go ahead and turn it in. If you're still looking for questions, then feel free to keep looking. All right, so 23 on this uh, quiz preview. Uh, 
i plus 4 equals absolute value of x minus 5. <coughs> Stage one of this problem. We usually like to graph things in the form of y equals all the other stuff. X minus five minus four. So this is an absolute value uh, function. And when we graph absolute value functions, what kind of shapes do they have generally? Mm -hmm. A V shape, yeah. One of those shapes are uh, just like the absolute value, like a 90 degree angle. Uh, between the two, or if they're really steep, or if they're right side up or upside down, they generally have a V shape. Um, well, how do we figure all that out? Is it upside down? Is it right side up? Is it moved over? Is it moved up? Is it moved down? Like, how do we determine that? Huh. Um. Question on the quiz, you're you want to graph it, how do you start graphing it? This is if the if there's a negative or a positive number inside of the absolute, absolute value. value sign to move it from left to right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know the the discussion and the the explanation of this is has been done uh, at least a couple times. Uh, so from that discussion. Uh, we know that this would move right five. If you subtract five, you would remove right five. <coughs> so when we say move right, we mean there is where's this graph that looks like this. That's the absolute <coughs> value of x. But then it moves to the right five. Okay. So if it moves to the right five, that's what it looks like. And that's what just this part does, if we ignore this. x minus 5, so we'll move to the right 5. But what about that minus 4? Okay. The absolute value of the thing, we subtract 4. It moves it up or down. It moves it up or down. Which way does this move it? Minus 4. <coughs> OK. Um, again, real quick, you take the absolute value of something. The, the graph of that looks like this. Just like that. <coughs> if you subtract 4 from it, what you're doing is you have the exact same function. I'll just cover up this negative 4, and we'll see we have the absolute value of x. Okay. The absolute value of x represents what is coming out of the function. I take the absolute value function, or the absolute value of that number, and that's what I plot as the y value. So I take that y value and I subtract 4 from it. Okay, here's the y value, right? Right here. Okay. We're going to subtract 4 from that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that point is 4 less than it used to be. And so will this one. This one will be 1, 2, 3, 4 less. And this one, 1, 2, 3, 4 less. We're taking every input that the absolute value gives, and subtracting 4 from it. And on the graph, that's represented by a shift down 4. Well, so after move, it moves right 5, we can move it down 4. Just input and output. This takes the output and makes it four less. The output on the graph is vertical, and so if we're going to go less uh, on the graph uh, in a vertical direction, less in the vertical direction would be down. Any others? The angle or the slope of the line of like that. Um, is that just like one over one? Of the regular one, yes. If we change it though, we could have a different slope. Um, like 24. One half. Okay. Remember that like this, this is the main body of our function, taking the absolute value. When we take the absolute value, that's the output. 
Normally that would be for every one you go over, you move up one. You go over one, you go up one, over one, up one. But now we're multiplying that output by one half. The outputs are now half as much as they would be otherwise. Okay, so now you move over one, you move up one half, not one. So this moves it to the right two. Right? And where the, the regular absolute value of x would, when you move over one, the output would be one. If you go over two, the output would be two. If you go over three, the output would be three. Um, but now the output would be one, but we multiply it by a half, so it's one half. So we could move over two and then go up a total of one. Well, that's just the slope, up one and over two. This, we treat it just like a line, it's the slope of the right side. The right side of the graph. Whether that's one half or negative one half, whatever it is, you can just treat it like the slope of the right side. So you go up one over two, up one over two in the other direction. <coughs> this side has a slope of positive one half. Just direct variation, or do you have a, a, a problem, specific problem? Like 14 and 18. 14 and 18. Uh, they're x and y very directly. OK, so the first thing that they say is, is really important. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to like, really do this problem. If, if we covered up x and y very directly, and we just started at y equals negative 6 when x equals 1 fourth, we could do this problem. Right? Saying that x and y vary directly is very specific and it's very necessary information. What is that telling us? What does y vary directly with x or x and y vary directly? What does that tell us about y and x? About their connectedness? That, yeah, it tells us exactly the way in which they're connected uh, and by connected, we could say equation, right? It tells mm -hmm. us something about the equation of that, that takes x and turns it into y. Right? So what does that equation look like? We don't have to know what it is specifically, but in general, a direct variation yeah. equation looks like what? What's that? Y equals ax. Y equals ax. So the first thing they tell us, basically, is this. By saying x and y vary directly, they're saying y is equal to a constant times x. That's the first piece of information. So now as we recognize that, and then we read the rest of it, y equals negative 6 when x equals 1 fourth. If we were going to write this equation, we didn't need to know what a is. We don't know what a is. But can we use the information they gave us to find a? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Plug in. Fill in x and y. Just plug them in, and then a will be the only unknown, and we'll solve for the unknown. So y is negative 6. And you get that by taking some constant times x. In this case, x is 1 fourth. Multiply by 4 over 1 on both sides. If you're canceling there, you get a is left. <coughs> Multiply by 4 on this side. Negative 24. The equation is y equals negative 24. So make sure you don't stop here. Don't, don't stop. Keep going. One more step. Actually write the equation. People will oftentimes find a and then not say what the equation that relates x and y is. Um, and then 18. Tell whether the data show direct variation. Uh, so time and miles. Or I guess we would go. We would go with d for distance. Time and distance. So at time four, we've got 185. At 184, at time five, we've got 460. At time six, we've got 828. And time seven, we've got 1288. <coughs> Well, if it's direct variation, what did we just say in the previous problem? What does it mean that they're direct variation? They vary directly. What's it mean? Oh, you take um, x times a constant and you take y. 
x times a constant will give you y. So you should be able to take x, multiply it by a constant, and get y. And then take the next x and multiply it by the same constant and get the next y, and all the way down the, the, uh, all the, way down the line. Okay. Or, to, to quickly figure out what a is, we would just divide y and x. Divide y by x, that should give you a. So y divided by x, what's y divided by x there? Forty-six. Okay. Uh, so we get forty-six. We need to divide this by that. That means four times forty-six gives one eighty-four. Right. So if this is direct variation, then this should be the equation, right? Y equals forty-six times x. Is that going to work? Five times forty-six is four sixty. No, it's not. Uh, and we're done. I mean, unless that constant works for every x, y pair, it's not direct variation. So, no. But if we went on down the line and 5 times 46 gave us the next y, and 6 times 46 gave us the next y, and 7 times 46 gave us the last one, that would be it. Yeah. Number 10. Number 10. about the this table got messed up. Um, let's just change this to negative. Pattern do you have? Yeah? Uh, y minus 1 equals x plus 4. Y minus 1. So we take 1 away from y. We take 1 away from 29, we get 28. And then it gives us, what did you say, equals what? x plus 4. x plus 4. Um, oh, I see, you're saying. Well, what, what we have here is an equation that we would like to be able to plug x into and it gives us what y is, right? Or, or if we plug in x and a y, an x and y pair, it would make the equation true. But if we put 29 here and negative 4 here, um, we get 0, or no, we get, uh, we get 28 equals 0. Does 28 equal 0? Oh. No, but we, we, we add 4 to each x to get to the next x, and we subtract 1 from y to get so you're, you're seeing the, the pattern, and I, I'm sure that's what you were trying to tell me, and I wasn't quite understanding. We're just subtracting one here, and subtracting one to get to the next one, subtracting one, subtracting one. And here we're adding four. <coughs> so how about the, like, Let's uh, maybe start at 29, and we're subtracting 1, right? Take 
and we subtract with 1, we get to 28. Right? But so far, this expression just equals 28. Um, that thing is like doesn't quite do it. We want to we want to cause it so that as we go up to each x and we plug it into some expression that will get the corresponding y. Okay. You gotta try something. You can't just sit there and not do anything and then it just thaw in the sky. You gotta try something, it'll probably be wrong, and we'll fix it, and then it might be more wrong still, and then we'll fix it and it'll be right. Or maybe we don't do 29 minus 1. Maybe we just throw on it. You have to try something. You have to. Looking at it and saying, I don't know if that's gonna work. So give it a guess. I'll help you develop your guess. there that makes any sense at all to you. y equals 4 over 1x plus 3. 4 over over x like that? Over 1 times x. 4 over 1 times x? Yeah, like the slope of the initial function. Okay, 4 over 1 times x, so like that 4 is the slope. Okay, and then what? Plus 29. Plus 29. Okay, now we got something. Um, the way to test this is we just plug in the x values and see if we get the correct y values. Okay? So when we plug in negative 4, we should get 29. Okay? So we put in negative 4. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16 plus 29 is not 29. This is, this is pretty close. Anybody want to suggest that we change something? We subtracted a lot. We wound up, we wound up sub subtracting 16, right? I think we, we kind of want to subtract something like 1, right? We would want to wind up with 1 being taken off. Okay. Fantastic. One fourth. All right. So one fourth times negative four. One fourth times negative four gives us negative one. All right. 
So we put a negative 4, and, we, and this part gives us negative 1. 29 minus 1, that gives us 28. But that's really close. Um, let's, let's go on to 0. Okay, we'll put 0 in here. 0. 1 fourth times 0 gives us 0. 29 plus 0 is 29. So what this is giving us is uh, it just gave us 4 and then or negative 4, sorry, negative 4, 28, 0, 29. Let's go, on, well, let's look at 4, let's put in 4. 1 fourth times 4 is 1, 29 plus 1 is 30. That's, it's, it's right, but it's wrong. It's, it's doing the right thing, but it's doing it in the wrong order. And it doesn't get, it, none of these numbers is right, right? This gets 28, this gets 29. Emily, did you have a suggestion? Yeah. Okay. So for one, like instead of the number the y numbers going down, they're going up. Any ideas for that problem? Yeah. Negative one over four. Instead of positive one over four, negative one over four? Yeah. Okay, now let's see what this is doing. So negative 4 goes in here, negative 4 goes in here. Negative 1 fourth times negative 4 is positive 1. Positive 1 plus 29 is 30. Okay, that's not far off. We got 29 is what we want. Um, 0 goes in here. 29 minus 0 gives us 29. One, negative 1 fourth times 4 is negative 1. 29 minus 1 is 28. We're almost there. Yeah, chance. I have 28. Instead of 29, use 28. So we'll start, we'll change our starting point and see how that goes. I'm sure everybody realizes this is where, this is the place to be, right? This is, this is correct. 28 minus 1, right? Negative 1, negative 1 fourth times negative 4 is a positive 1. 28 plus 1 is 29. And we know that the pattern already is that every time we uh, go up four, we're going to go down by one. So 27, and yeah, we can see it's working. The, like, all of these suggestions came from you, not from me. I just, all I did was write down your thoughts and maybe write down things that push you in the right direction. But I didn't do anything but write down what you suggested and showed you what your suggestion did. Okay? And, and added in some little observations. This kind of stuff right here, pattern recognition and trying to model a relationship between X and Y is it's a lot of trial and error. Try that, that kind of made sense. Like Gordon started with uh, 29 plus four times X. We had, we had a pattern going that was kind of what we wanted. It was going in the opposite direction, and it was going up by a lot. Okay, then we flipped that over, right? The, I think the idea was there. Gordon had the idea, but we just flipped that over, and then we got it so that uh, we, we turned steps of four into steps of one by dividing each one by four, right? Now four becomes one, eight becomes two. And if we were going in the wrong direction, all we needed to do was flip it around, right? We don't want to go, we don't want to add those numbers, we want to subtract that off. And so we go down like this, and we just, we just start at 28 instead of 29. And there's no way to do it unless you start. There's no way until you get very experienced and have lots of practice that you're just going to look at it and say, this is the rule. You're going to write it down. Write down what you're getting. Write down what the output of your function is and see how it's different from what you want to get and adjust accordingly. Realize that's, that's one of the more challenging things about this, this unit, but that's the way it gets done. Um, other questions? So y equals 
equals the absolute value of x plus a plus b. Uh, a doesn't equal zero, and, a, and b doesn't equal zero, because if they did, we just have the absolute value of x. So there's something other than zero. How do the values of a and b affect the graph of the function when you compare it to y equals absolute value of x? Y, equal, y equals absolute value of x, that's that parent function we've talked about. Okay, its vertex is at the origin. It goes up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. So if we add a into the, uh, you know, add a to x, how does that affect the graph? What would that do? Left, whatever a is, right? Yeah. And so we can say it goes left a. And even if a were negative, if we went left negative, that would mean going right, right? We negate leftness, we're going right. So what about adding b? Up or down. Up or down. So b makes it go up or down. We could say, yeah, b makes it go up or down, or we could say that it goes up. B, you know what, b units, or whatever. And even if we go up negative b, we would be going down, and so that would work too. We just talked about this, right? We got a plus 5 and a plus 5. What's going to happen because of this plus 5? Left 5. This one? Up 5. Okay. So already we know that it's going to move to the left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And up 5. 5. Put it down there. Right. That's where the vertex is going to be. Okay, but what about this negative out here? Flips it upside down, flips it over its vertex. Flips vertically over vertex. This vertex is right here. So I'm going to make it open down instead of up. Uh, but it's just the steepness is the same, right? The, the slope is, is similar, at least. So it'll come down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, go right through the uh, origin there. And comes down five and over five. And right through there. Okay. Anything else? All right, let's put uh, everything away except for maybe a calculator and a pencil. Take this quiz at some point. You can give it to me or you 